Breadfruit, known as ulu, has been grown in Hawaii for centuries. In Hawaiian legend, the god Ku transformed himself into a breadfruit tree to feed his family. This drawing is the only surviving glimpse of the vast size, 18 to 20 miles long and up to a mile wide, of the upland Kona's breadfruit groves that produce thousands of tons of food annually. These trees at the Amy Greenwell Ethnobotanical Garden in Captain Cook are the only intact remnants of this once enormous production system. Ulu was an important food for the Hawaiians. In the old days, it was, uh, there was no, or probably very little rice due to limited uh, shipping and uh, no air shipping for sure. So uh, it, it was a matter of survival and I, I think the Ulu helped them a lot. Because the older people, they, you know, like I said, they can eat Ulu poi three times a day. And it's in your blood, it's in your DNA. You just need to go out and exercise it. And the voices will come back and, and guide you. <laughs> While I try not. <laughs> Breadfruit came to Hawaii from Tahiti. Breadfruit has strong ties to many Pacific cultures. Breadfruit is still important today in the Society Islands, Samoa, and Micronesia, where the trees are a prominent part of the landscape. Breadfruit remains a staple of the daily modern diet and is a valued source of food throughout the Pacific. Although breadfruit is usually cooked on the kitchen stove these days, the more traditional and still common practice is cooking breadfruit by roasting it in a fire. Here we see Ruta cooking it the way it's been done for centuries in the Pacific Islands. In Micronesia, as in many other places in the Pacific, breadfruit is cooked on heated rocks and covered with giant leaves. In Pohnpei, it is called an um, similar to the Hawaiian emu where the food is cooked in a deep covered pit. Sustainability and self-sufficiency are hot topics that are discussed these days, but it's easy to overlook that just two or three generations ago, we were self-sufficient and Ulu was part of that self-sufficiency. Aloha kako, I am Russell Kokubun, recently appointed to be the director for the state Department of Agriculture. Uh, I'm very excited about that position because I feel it will be uh, a appropriate role to really advocate for agriculture and in particular uh, important self-sufficiency crops like ulu. And I believe firmly that ulu has a major role to play in the future of Hawaii. I love to eat ulu. It's delicious. It's a wonderful, nutritious fruit. I believe breadfruit can be a keystone species for food security in Hawaii. It can provide food and economic opportunities for families, farmers, and entrepreneurs. Breadfruit is gluten-free and can be made into flour. Breadfruit flour has great potential for developing new markets and new products for breadfruit. We got into breadfruit kind of by accident because we planted one breadfruit tree when we started as a novelty. And when we sent the first half a dozen breadfruit from that tree to the store, they said, wow, you grow ulu? We'll take all you can grow. So from that point, we had to plant another half a dozen or a dozen breadfruit trees. We now have a half a dozen varieties of breadfruit, and we sell all the breadfruit that we can uh, grow. Aloha, I'm Olela Pa'a and I love breadfruit because it's tasty, nutritious, and versatile. Here I have a delicious pancake. It's really simple to make. You make a batter and place a ripe, sweet breadfruit 
that you mash and place it in the batter. We have some ulu chips here that can be served with some fine ripened tomato soup. It's so delicious together. For your next poo-poo party or appetizer party, try tostones made with our wonderful breadfruit and I'm serving it with a nice remoulade sauce. Another appetizer that you may want to try is a breadfruit fritter served with sour cream and some tomato salsa. Young, immature breadfruit. It tastes just like eating fresh artichoke. Next time you want to make a potato salad, you now can make a ulu salad. Breadfruit is perfect for this fine dish using keahole lobster, luau sauce, and topped with fresh breadfruit. I prepared a mashed breadfruit, exactly how you make mashed potatoes. This is a grass-fed beef stew served with chunks of fresh breadfruit. If you are a vegetarian, a breadfruit curry is a healthy choice. For Asian touch, steamed ulu with pork and shrimp hash served with a soy ginger sauce. A ripe and sweet breadfruit lends itself very well to desserts. Try this breadfruit carrot cake next time. Breadfruit is an extremely attractive tree and it can be used to great effect in home gardens and community landscapes while also providing an abundance of food. Breadfruit trees provide permanent canopy and soil cover. They help protect Hawaii's precious watersheds. The way I understand urban forestry is it's an integration of trees and woody shrubs in urban environments, envir environments where people live and work. Trees in those environments can give many, many benefits. They, they provide shelter and shade, a cooling effect. They provide a visual effect. They, they enhance the visual environment. There are many studies that, that have shown trees actually um, improve the mental health of people living near them. Breadfruit is the perfect tree for the urban landscape. It produces so much food, even one or two trees can feed a family for months. In terms of its appearance, it's just a beautiful tree. It says, it says Hawaii, it says Polynesia, and um, it really should be a part of our landscape. Breadfruit is easy to grow. The trees require little attention or care and can be grown in a wide range of ecological conditions and soil types. My dad used to say, you cut down a ulu tree, you'll end up starving. And uh, because the ulu tree is, it's a self-sustaining tree. You don't have to really uh, spend time like, you know, like the, the kalu. Uh, it'll do well with water only. But if you want to increase the size of the ulu, then, you know, whatever uh, mulching or whatever you can do to help make the soil better, then your quality of the ulu will get better. But otherwise, it's self-sustaining. Uh, the ulu tree will, will outlive two, three generations and still be fruitful. So it, it's something that... Uh, uh, almost like a guaranteed food storage. You know. One of our goals is to provide information on the proper management and the proper care of your trees to have the healthiest breadfruit trees possible. One of the biggest questions that we get is concerning pruning and shaping of your breadfruit trees. Some of the reasons we would want to prune a young breadfruit tree is to reduce the height, to control the shape, and to make the tree fit into the landscape, home, or orchard where it's planted. Some of the reasons you might prune a large or mature breadfruit tree is to remove any dead or damaged branches. 
Similarly, you might want to reduce the height of your breadfruit tree to a height that more easily facilitates harvest. Often when pruning, the work you have to do is 30 to 40 feet off the ground in the canopy of the tree. Consulting with a professional arborist or someone trained in safety is crucial at these times. Agroforestry is a land use system that integrates trees with crops and animals. And from agroforestry systems, we can derive many benefits, including ecological services, environmental services, and economic benefits. My personal vision is to bring back the agroforests that were once traditionally used throughout Hawaii and that you can still find in parts of the Pacific. Breadfruit agroforests are a model for truly sustainable land use systems in other tropical nations. The breadfruit trees can be planted with species that are locally grown and used. The mission of the Breadfruit Institute is to promote the conservation and use of breadfruit for food and reforestation. The Breadfruit Institute manages the world's largest collection of breadfruit with more than 120 varieties from over 30 Pacific Islands. Breadfruit is traditionally propagated using root shoots that arise from the mother tree. This is time consuming and slow with a low success rate. You literally produce one or maybe a few trees at a time. The Breadfruit Institute has revolutionized breadfruit propagation. Tissue culture has an amazing potential for the development of breadfruit as a crop for the tropics and for the world. A single piece of a breadfruit tree, each individual cell can develop into a whole plant. So from a one centimeter piece, you can get thousands of plants and Eventually, we will get millions of propagated plants from a single breadfruit tree in Kahanu Garden. Dr. Diane Ragoni and I are looking at the nutritional potential of breadfruit. We've looked at more than 100 varieties for their protein, mineral, and vitamin contents. We've found varieties within this collection that can satisfy the micronutrient requirements of two adult women by a single fruit. These sorts of results help to address many of the issues of hidden hunger, the idea that people might have enough food, but it may be deficient in some of the nutrients they require. Breadfruit shows excellent potential for addressing hidden hunger in many parts of the world. The Breadfruit Institute is engaged in a global hunger initiative to distribute exceptional varieties from our collection. These trees will be used for planting projects for food security, sustainable agriculture, and income generation. The Breadfruit Institute is engaged in outreach programs to help and encourage people in Hawaii to grow more breadfruit. One of these projects is a partnership with the Hawaii Homegrown Food Network, the Ho'ulu Ka'ulu Project. You know what, as a Hawaiian, I would say eat ulu, but to everybody else, definitely eat ulu. <laughs>